Okay, so if you look at John chapter 14 and verse number 1, it starts off by saying again the words of Jesus Christ, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, Jesus Christ knows that as, as, as Christians, as, as believers, even though we are saved, we can be people that have our hearts troubled. You know, when we're going through some difficult times, uh, it's very easy. You know, it, it's just part of our, our, our makeup, you know, that we can be easily troubled. And so John chapter 14 is written primarily so we can be comforted in a time of trouble. Now, don't turn away from there. I'm going to read to you from Galatians 5.22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. And the third one on the list is peace. And so what I'll be preaching about today, uh, brethren, or tonight, is on the fruit of the Spirit of peace. Peace as a fruit of the Spirit. Then it says, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So I'm continuing the fruit of the Spirit series, and we're up to part three on peace. And so obviously, if you are being troubled... What is it that you need from the Lord? What is it that you really desire from the Lord? You want peace, you want peace don't you? You'd, you'd rather live a, a life of peace than live a life where you're troubled, where you're worried, where you're, where you're concerned. But Jesus Christ acknowledges that we are going to have times that we, that we are troubled. Now drop down to verse number 25 in the same chapter, John 14, 25. Jesus Christ says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And so you can see that one of the names or one of the titles of the Holy Ghost is the Comforter. Why would we need a Comforter? Well, we need the Comforter when we're troubled, right? We need the Comforter when we're concerned and worried. And of course, if we have someone to comfort us, that's going to bring peace. You know, we'll be able to have peace in a time of trouble. It keeps going. It says, Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Then look at the words that Jesus Christ says in verse number 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. And so what is this peace? That Jesus Christ is saying that he's left us? What is this peace that Jesus Christ is says is going to give us? Well, it's the comforter. It's the Holy Ghost. Okay? If we don't separate it from what Christ has just said. And then he says these words, Not as the world giveth. So can the world give peace? Well, it says not as the world giveth. So the world can give a type of peace. Okay? I mean, isn't the world always giving out the Nobel Peace Prize? I don't know how often is that peace prize given. Okay, and yet there isn't peace in this world. You know, the, the world is often trying to, uh, you know, find peace in different places in the world. There's never going to be a time of peace, brethren, until Jesus Christ comes back and establishes his kingdom. All right, but there is a, there is a peace that the world tries to give you, but Jesus Christ says, No, I'm going to leave you, I'm going to give you my peace. This peace is not like what the world giveth. Then he says, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. All right. So when we think about the topic of peace, and we think about what is the opposite of peace, I think most often when, when you think about what the opposite of peace is, it's generally going to generally kind of think of war. You know, kind of you know when when we're not in a time of war, we'll say it's a time of peace. And yet, you know, warfare, this the conflict of that nature, can be the opposite of peace. But you know what? We're called to actually fight a war. You know, we're soldiers for the Lord. We're fighting a spiritual warfare. You're not going to find peace in the spiritual warfare at this point in time. But there is a different type of peace that Jesus Christ speaks of, and that's to help us overcome being troubled, help us overcome fear, right? Neither let it be afraid, right? Net, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so when Christ speaks about this peace that he gives us, it's to help us overcome trouble, it's to help us overcome fear fear all right so if you're going through a time of trouble if you're going through fears what you need is the peace of jesus christ okay not as the world giver if you don't want to be seeking the world's peace okay to comfort your hearts no you need to seek it from what christ has left us which is the holy ghost which is the comforter and so this is why it's called the fruit of the spirit okay because the spirit is the holy ghost 
Okay, And this is something that the Holy Ghost can produce in our lives. And you know, we ought to be known as people that are peaceful. You know, we ought not to be known as people that are troubled. We ought not to be known as people that are afraid. We ought to be known as people that have the peace of God in us. Okay, now can you please uh, turn to John chapter 16, just two chapters uh, forward. John chapter 16 and verse number 33. John chapter 16 and verse number 33. Like I said, you know, some people think of peace as, you know, uh, no warfare. You know, like there's no difficulties. But that is not the Christian life, okay? And in John 16, verse 33, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. I mean, those are beautiful words of Jesus. He says, look, if you're in me, you know, if you're someone that is saved... If you have Christ as Savior, he says, look, you will have peace. And you go, wow, we're not going to go through difficulties. We're not going to go through trials. But look what he says straight after. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. Hold on, Jesus. You just told us in you we can have peace. And now you're telling me we're definitely going to have tribulation? Which one is it, Jesus? Well, it's both. Amen. Okay, it's both. We can go through tribulation and be at peace going through tribulation, okay? Then he says this, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, okay? Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so I don't know if I brought, um, I think I mentioned this before, I don't know if it was this church or New Life Baptist Church, but I said that when we fight our spiritual warfares, we don't fight for victory, okay? We fight from victory. Jesus Christ has already been victorious. Jesus Christ has already overcome the world. And if we're in Christ, we too have overcome the world. Okay? When we go through tribulations and, and hardships and fears, Christ has already overcome those things. That's where we can be at peace. Okay? You know, if I were to, you know, maybe have my, my life threatened, I, would, I should be at peace. Now, will, will my heart be troubled to some extent? Yeah, I mean, Christ even talks about, you know, that there are times that we're going to be troubled, but that's why he's given us the Holy Ghost to give us comfort, to give us peace, okay? But if I, even if I were to lose my life, listen, as soon as I open my eyes, I'm going to be in heaven. You know, I, I know what my eternal destination is, no matter what happens, okay? And that ought to be the peace, that, 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 you know, that ought to be the peace that we have, right? Or if we're going through difficulties... And, and, you know, there might be some concerns our way. We ought to have the peace to know that God is allowing us to go through that tribulation for His purpose. Whatever that purpose is, all right? And, and, and it is tribulation, it is hardships that help you grow and mature as a Christian. You know, if, if you have no hardships, if you have no persecution, I guarantee this, you're going to stay as a babe in Christ. You're not going to be able to exercise the things that God has, has, has uh, given us instructed us to live by if you don't go through some level of difficulty okay it's difficulties it's tribulations that helps us to grow it's tribulations it's difficulties that help us uh, draw back to the Lord uh, as a refuge and a place of safety and for peace okay so it, it's, diff it's it's tribulation that we need to experience Jesus Christ promises us we're going to experience that but we can still have the peace of God as we go through it now, can you please turn to Galatians chapter 6 for me? Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. And while you're turning there, I'm going to read to you from Romans 14, 17. You go to Galatians 6. I'm going to read to you from Romans 14, 17. It says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, okay? Righteousness, peace, joy, this is the kingdom of God. And if you're saved, you've entered into that kingdom, spiritually speaking. You know, one day that kingdom's gonna be fully realized when Christ comes back, okay? But for now, it's a spiritual kingdom that when you are saved, you enter that kingdom, spiritually speaking, okay? But within that kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. Hey, those are three fruits of the Spirit right there. You've got the joy, which I covered last time. You've got the peace. 
And the righteousness is another way of saying goodness. Goodness is one of the fruits of the Spirit that we see in Galatians chapter 5. And so again, where are these things? It says, in the Holy Ghost. Notice the consistency of the Bible. We find these fruits, okay, to help us go through difficult times in the Holy Ghost. The comforter which Jesus Christ has given us. The point being is that to develop peace in our lives, we have to be in touch with the Holy Ghost. We have to allow Him to work this fruit in our lives. We cannot be living a life that, that resists, or, resists or, or quenches the Holy Ghost in our lives. We need to be attuned to what the Holy Ghost is teaching us, how He's working in us in order for this fruit to be produced. Okay? If you withhold, if you, if you try to, uh, uh, you know... Um, resist the Holy Ghost, this fruit is not going to develop in your life. Okay? So you can see that it's, it ties in with what the Holy Ghost does in our lives. Now, you're in Galatians 6, verse number 15. Galatians 6, verse 15. It says, For in Christ Jesus, so that's if you're saved, if you're in Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Now, again, what is that new creature? Can you see that new creature on the outward? No, it's the same flesh. You know, I, I still have the same flesh that I had when I was unsaved. And then when I got saved, I still have the same flesh. You know, I still have those lusts of the flesh. I still have those things that this flesh desires to do. Okay? That's not the new man. The new man is the born again spirit. Okay? The, 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 the new spirit that you have within you, how is that spirit born again? It's born of the Spirit, right? It's born of the Holy Ghost. And then it says this, verse number 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Peace be upon who? Muhammad? <laughs> is that what the um, Muslims say? You know, every time they talk about their, their prophet, you know, peace be upon No, peace be upon them that are in Christ Jesus. So the only way for you to have true peace is if you're saved, if you're in Christ, if you have that new creature. That new creature will be at peace. And when you're troubled and you're this, you know, uh, worried and upset, that's the flesh. Okay? And so you have this decision to make. Do I walk after the Spirit which actually has this peace that can be produced in my life? Or do I seek after the flesh, the old man, the old creature? That's where the troubles are. That's where the worries are. No, we need to seek to be in the new man. You know, put on the new man and put off that old man. You know, crucify or mortify that flesh. That's how we're going to develop the peace that we have within us. I'm going to read to you from uh, Romans chapter 10, verse number 15. And if you can please go to Ephesians chapter 2. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read to you from Romans 10, 15. Very familiar passage. I've preached on this a few times already recently. It says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, right? And bring glad tidings of good things. So what is it that brings peace in the life of, of people? It's the gospel, okay? It's the reconciliation between God and man. When someone believes on Christ and, and His blood uh, has atoned for our sin and we receive the righteousness of Christ and we can stand before God in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that's what brings peace between God and man, okay? And so as I said, you know, our position before God is a place of peace. We are at peace with God. I die, brethren, I'm going to stand before God. That's, that's the peace that, you know, that this world wants, even though they're so prideful to think that they can get it some other way by good works or, or, or what. You know, everybody, I don't care who it is, everyone thinks, what's going to happen to me after I die? Do I have a peace when I die? You know, when someone passes away, we often say, hey, rest in peace. But most often than not, they're not resting at all. Most often than not, they're, they're, they're screaming in the torments of hell. But if a believer passes away, hey, truly that person can rest in peace. Okay, because he's made peace with God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Speaking about Jesus. For He is our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Now this us that He's referring to is not between God and man. It's between the Jews and the Gentiles. 
Okay? Because between the Jews and the Gentiles, there was this division, right? The nation of Israel were the people of God. That was the, the physical nation that God was working through in the Old Testament. And so that automatically created some division with the Gentiles, of course, because they were worshipping false gods. But Christ comes, right, and brings peace between these two groups. Look at verse number 15. Having abolished the flesh, in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments contain ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Just keep these things in mind, right? Verse 14 says that Jesus is our peace. Now, it's saying that Jesus has come making peace. Again, between these two, these two groups. Verse number 16. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you. What's that peace again? The gospel of peace. Right? Christ came preaching peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. So the same message of peace, the same gospel of preach, was preached to those that are far off, the Gentiles, and them that, are, that were nigh. You notice that there in verse number 17, it says, uh, and preached uh, peace to you, that's one group, right, which were far off. Who is he writing to? To the, to the Ephesian church, the Gentiles. Okay? So the you is, are the Ephesians. The you are the Gentiles. And then it says, and to them, that's another group that were nigh. That's the Jews. Okay? The same gospel saves both groups of people. This is what brings peace between the two groups. Right? It's, it's crazy how people think that, oh, the Jews get saved some other way. Are you insane? How do you not see the peace that Jesus Christ came and brought between these two groups? Verse number 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye, who are the ye, the, the Ephesian church, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So I just wanted to read that passage to you because you can see how many times peace is brought up, right? Jesus Christ is peace. He's the Prince of Peace. That's one of his names, okay? Not only that, he's made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles, meaning that if we're all together in Christ Jesus, there ought not to be any division, you know, uh, you might say ethnic, ethnic, you know, my ethnicity is Chilean, right? And some people look for peace or companionship and friendship with the same ethnicities. You know, this is, this is normal. This is why, you know, uh, Fairfield is known as, you know, Little Iraq, okay? Because the Assyrians like to just get gathered together. And this is why in Cabramatta you've got Chinatown. Okay, because, you know, well, it's mainly Vietnamese there and stuff like that, but they, they like to uh, be together. People of the same ethnicity like to come together because they feel there's some type of peace, some type of connection between them. But that's why I, lo I love church, because we're all of different backgrounds. It doesn't matter if we're Jew or Gentile or if you're, you're from uh, Greece or from Italy or from South America or you're Aussie or you're white or you're black or you're Jewish. It doesn't matter if we're in Christ Jesus, there's peace. No matter what, you know, what, what, what there is. You know, this is the true answer to racism. Yeah. That we're all one in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I find more in common with a believer, even if you're a completely different ethnicity, even if maybe between our nations there was some type of war in the past or something, I, I find more in common with you as a brother or sister in Christ than I do with my so-called fellow man. That's how it ought to be. Okay? Jesus Christ came to bring peace to those that are within Him, in Him. That one body that's been reconciled through the cross unto the Father. <clears throat> I want you to turn to Romans chapter 8 for me. Please go to Romans chapter 8. We've looked at peace between us and God. And we can only have that in Christ Jesus. And now I just kind of want to keep building on the fact that we've been given the comforter, we've been given the Holy Ghost to give us peace as we walk and we, as we live out the Christian life. And I just want to show you why it is that you struggle with peace. Okay? And why I struggle with peace. You know, I'm not pointing pointed fingers. We all struggle with this at different times. And in 2020, and as we, we go into 2021 with the whole COVID situation, 
There's a lot of Christians that are struggling with peace. Honestly, there's a lot. Maybe you're, maybe you're counted amongst that group, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people just struggling with the concept of peace, and they're unsettled, they're frustrated with all the things that are going on. But you know what? Even in the midst of tribulation, we can have peace. That's what we saw at the beginning of the sermon, right? And I want to show you where this lack of peace comes from. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So we see there, the flesh. Now, our spirit there is capital S. I, be, I do believe that's referring to the Holy Spirit. Remember, our, our spirit was born from the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that talks to our spirit. So there is a connection anyway between the Holy Spirit and the spirit, the new spirit that we have within us. But notice there are these two elements that were being dealt with here. Look at verse number six. For to be carnally, what's carnal? You know, uh, meat or, or flesh. Okay. To be carnally minded is death. Look at this. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, it's about our mindset. Do you have a peaceful mind? Are you at peace? Even with all the lock, you know, lock, different types of lockdown, different restrictions, whatever situation, you know, we find ourselves, you've got to wear a mask here, you've got to wear a mask there, whatever it is. You know, well, are you at peace about that? You know, and if you're at peace, great. That tells me that you're spiritually minded. That you, you're not concerned about this earth. You know this place is, is you know God's going to burn it down. Okay? And you know, just at the end times, things are just going to get progressively worse. We should know this. Okay? And if you're just, well, that's how it is. And you know what? I'm at peace anyway. That means you're spiritually minded. Your, your mindset are on eternal things. Your mindset is, you know, well, you know, it's just one step, one day closer to the coming of Christ. Your mind is on spiritual matters. But if you're not, if you're not living the life, you know, a life of peace, that tells me that you're carnally minded. You know, you, you're operating out of the flesh. Okay? You're thinking too much about carnal things, earthly things, worldly things, rather than the things that are eternal. Look at verse number 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You say, Pastor Kevin, I've been struggling with peace throughout 2020 and 2021. You know what? That's because you were at enmity, enmity against God. Your mind was an enemy toward God because you're operating from that carnal mind. You know, God does not want to be an enemy to you. He wants you to have that life and peace. Okay? But that comes by being spiritually minded. This is the struggle that we all have. We all struggle with this. Every time you sin. If, if you're honest enough to admit you've sinned today, you know why? Because you're carnally minded. Okay? And when you sin against God, you trespass against the Lord. That's what sin means. You know, the transgression of the law. You know, you've, 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 at that point, you became an enemy to God when you sinned today. Okay? You were operating out of that carnal mind rather than operating from a spiritual mindset, which is life and peace. Let me just read verse number 7 again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It says, look, it's, this carnal mind doesn't submit itself or it's not subject to the law of God. It doesn't want to follow God's commandments. And it neither indeed can be. You, if, if you try to live a carnal life, you're not going to please the Lord. You're never going to satisfy the laws of God. Okay? The only way we can keep God's laws and keep ourselves clean to some extent is by being spiritually minded. And when you're spiritually minded, that's where life and peace will come from. Okay? This fruit of the Spirit that the Holy Ghost wants to develop in you okay? is, is all about your mindset. Where are you mentally? Are you mentally carnal, uh, on carnal things or is it on spiritual matters? Now, so, you know, like I said, you know, have you been at peace since COVID has turned this world upside down? Have you been at peace? And if you haven't been, then let, let this sermon challenge you. I need that peace. You know, go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need this fruit of the Spirit. I've been lacking it in the last couple of years. I've been lacking this during COVID. Lord, give me that peace. Okay? Now, as I said to you, peace overcomes fear. When we looked at the opposite of, of peace, you know, we looked at, you know, it's the opposite of being afraid or being troubled. And me, I'll just read a few passages to you. Um, I might get you to turn to John chapter 20. Go to John chapter 20. <clears throat> and I'll read to you some other passages. I'm going to read to you from Judges 6.22. Judges 6.22, it says, 
And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, so an angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. So when God speaks to Gideon here, he says, Look, peace be unto thee, fear not. Do you see the opposite of peace? Okay, the opposite of peace is not to be afraid. You know, and, and I, don't, I don't blame these guys. I think I'd be afraid if I just suddenly saw an angel. Okay, you know what? One of these heavenly beings come before me and, and you see the glory of, of the, the heavenly host. Yeah, I think I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be shocked as well. And so the message often, you often see this in the Bible, it's fear not. Don't be afraid, right? Be at peace. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 18, the prophet Daniel, it says, Then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me, and said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. You see, peace will strengthen you. Peace will give you the strength to overcome fear. Look at John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse number 19. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, look at this, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. I want you to see that. Say, do you struggle with fears? Are you a fearful person? You know, well, you know what the answer is? God's peace. You need God's peace. You need this fruit of the Spirit. To me, this is so vital, especially in a troubled society, in a troubled world. You know, in a time when, when things are so unsettled, you need the peace of God. I need the peace of God, right? Otherwise, you will struggle and go through these fears. You will be troubled, okay? And you will be exercising that carnal mind instead of exercising the spiritual mind and being focused on the things that God wants us to do. And so, you know, the, what I'm trying to tell you, brethren, is, you know, don't fear, you know. And, and sometimes people, you know, don't want to step out and, and do something great for God because they have fears. You know, sometimes people just don't want to go soul winning because they're afraid, you know, of what's, how are people going to react at the door? You know, if, if the reason, one of the reasons you're held back from going soul winning, you know, and, and you know it's fear, well, you need peace. You need the peace of God. You, you need to ask God, give me this peace so I have the strength to be able to go out there and face my fears. And really, you know, for those of us that go soul winning on a regular basis, you know, maybe it kind of was scary at the beginning, right? But now it's kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just going to knock on someone's door, right? What's the worst someone can do, right? I mean, what are they, maybe shout some profanity at you, that's probably the worst they're going to do to you, right? And so, you know, we, we need to not be afraid, you know, some people are afraid of failure, right? And, and uh, you know, this was one reason why I was sort of, uh, I, I, it took me a long time to go soul winning, because I was afraid that if I knock on someone's door and they ask me some question, that I won't be able to answer that question. And I had that fear that I'm going to fail in my efforts to go soul winning, right? I thought that I needed an answer to every arguments or you know every so-called contradiction that might be in the bible you know uh, every argument to evolution and and every argument to every false religion you know and i i didn't want to go so winning for a while because you know for, for you know several years you know as a young man because i was just like well i'm not gonna be able to answer the questions and so there's a fear of failure right you know some people have a have a fear of maybe finding a, a spouse maybe you know i'll, I'll never find a spouse. I'm never going to find, you know, don't, don't give in to, to that kind of fear. You know, what you need is the peace of God in your life. Okay? Some people might be afraid of, of, of failure, of finding a job, right? You know, they, they've gone and they've applied for a job, they've applied for a job, they don't get it, and, and they've got the fears that I'm going to fail my family, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fail the people that are, are dependent upon me. And you know what? You just need the peace of God in your life. You know, do what God expects you to do and, and just realize that sometimes you will fail. Sometimes you will fall. But look, do it peace, peaceably. 
Okay? Don't, don't do it, you know. Don't, don't prevent yourself from failure because of fears. We're all going to make mistakes in life. You know, you, you're going to go soul winning and you're sometimes going to mess it up. It happens. What are you going to do? Okay? You just got to learn to pick yourself up, okay, and, and, and carry on. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, For a just man faileth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. The righteous man, the just man. You know what? No matter how good you are, how mature you are, you're going to fail. You're going you're to fall. All right? So don't allow the fear of failure stop you from doing what God wants. You, you're going to fall. And guess what? When you fall, you get right back up and say, God, help me get back up. Lord, help me not to make this mistake again. Help me not to have a fear. Give me a peace so I can pursue what it is that you want me to accomplish in my life and, and, uh, and operate, you know, in accordance to your word. Operate out of the will that you have before me in your life. Otherwise, you know, if you, if you allow fear to get a hold of you, you're never going to achieve. You're, no, you're never going to be successful right, at, at serving the Lord, at, at doing what the Lord wants you to do. Can you please turn to Philippians chapter 4? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Because you might say, well, yeah, Pastor Kevin, I, I need the peace of God. I, I realize that. I realize I have these unnecessary fears. I realize I'm troubled and, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 has been a real frustrating time in my life and I just don't have the peace. What, what's the solution? All right, how do I get this peace? We already saw, we already kind of talked about solution, right? It's about walking the spirit, okay? It's about exercising your mind on spiritual matters, okay? Walking in that new man, putting off the old man. But look at Philippians chapter 4, verse number 5. And this is a really great passage to think about. It says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. Then it says these words, The Lord is at hand. You know what that's saying? The Lord is close by. You know, anytime you need the Lord, He's as far as just you saying a prayer. The Lord is right there. The Lord is at hand. Then it says in verse number 6, Be careful for nothing. Hey, don't be full of care. Don't be full of worries. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And so how is it that we deal with our troubles? You need to learn how to pray. You need to take these things to the Lord, right? With thanksgiving. This is the best way to pray. Okay, don't just be like, oh Lord, I need this, I need this, I need this. It's good to exercise your mind and say, well, Lord, how have you blessed me today? How have you blessed me over the last week? Lord, thank you for my paycheck that I got this week. Lord, thank you for blessing. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for a home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the comforter. You know, when you approach God in prayer, go with thanksgiving as well. Okay? As well as bringing your supplications before him. Now, the next verses are, are crucial because it says in verse number 7, and, so once you've done this, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the peace we need, brethren, is the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Okay? It's beyond understanding is what that says. Okay? People, you know, you can live a life of peace and people can look at you and go, why is it so peaceful? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense because it's the peace of God. It's not the peace that comes from this world. That means we can go through all kinds of hardships and we can still have a smile on our face and be at peace. I know Christians like that. I, I've seen mature Christians in churches where it's just, they're always at peace. They're always joyful. They're always at church serving God and worshiping God. And, it, and you think, you know, you, you could be mistaken in saying, that person never suffers. Surely that person never goes through any trouble. How is it that they're always at peace? You know why? It's not because they don't go through troubles. We all go through troubles. Okay? Never think, I'm the only one going through some difficulties. We all do. Everybody does. Every family has some difficulty that they face. Okay? It's just that these people have been able to develop that fruit of peace in their lives. They don't even notice that they're going through difficulties. Okay? 
So this is a peace that comes from God. It passeth all understanding. Look at verse number 8. This is other good advice about the peace. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good reports, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now look at verse number 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Hey, how is it that you can live a life of peace? Again, it's about exercising your mind, right? Being spiritually minded. And so you take your mind and you put your mind on these things. What things? The things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely. Look, I don't know how much time you spend, okay, turning on the news. I, I, look, I, I keep preaching about against the media these days, right? But honestly, their job is to get you be carnally minded. Their job is to make you afraid. Their job is to make you troubled. Okay? And you keep putting that TV on, that's all you're going to You're just going to be carnally minded. You're just going to be upset and frustrated and worried when God says, no, put your mind on things that are lovely. It's not lovely to turn on the TV and find out there's some car crash and some other people died and some other people got wiped out and there's some war somewhere in the world and you're just constantly feeding your mind every day this thing. That's not lovely. Okay? I was thinking, lovely, what sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. This is what you need to be spending your mind on. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the mainstream media. I'm talking about YouTube. You know, I'm talking about the alternative media, right? I mean, that's what the alternative media likes to do, right? They say, hey, stop listening to, to the mainstream media because they're lying to you and they are lying to you. And say, like, listen to us, listen to the alternative media. You know, we'll tell you what's really going on. All right, let's find out what's really going on. And then you measure those things with the things that are in this list. Uh, are they, uh, is everything they say true? Is everything they say honest? Is everything they say pure and lovely? Good report, virtue and praise? No. And so, you know, it's funny because you've got these two groups of people. One group of people that listen to mainstream media. And then another group of people that listen to alternative media. And they look at the people that listen to mainstream media and they say, oh, you're the sheeple. You know, you're the sheep. Yeah, that's what we are. Jesus Christ calls us the sheep. And he's the shepherd. There's nothing wrong with being a sheep. And we've seen recently that, hey, we're sheep that are counted for the slaughter. There's nothing wrong with being a sheep. Okay? As long as your shepherd is Jesus Christ, your shepherd not, ought not to be mainstream media, and your shepherd is definitely not the alternative media either. Both of these things are going to cause you to be troubled and worried and upset and be kindly minded when our instruction is to be spiritually minded. That we ought to have our minds on Jesus Christ. This is our media. This is what we feast our eyes upon. This is the commentary on the world. Okay? Not mainstream media and not the alternative media. They're both carnally minded. Okay? One might be more truthful than the other, but they're both carnally minded. Okay? And you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be worried. You're not going to be at peace. Okay? Peace comes by following the shepherd, by reading the words of the shepherd. Okay? There's nothing going on in this world that wasn't already covered in this book. And if you don't get that, you just need to start reading this again. Okay, this book talks about everything that's going on in 2020 and 2021 till Jesus Christ comes back. And even after that, okay, even for a thousand years after that, and even in the new heavens and new earth, God's word already gives us everything we need. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay, be, be careful about what you spend your time on, brethren. Okay, be careful. <clears throat> Can you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. Pastor Kevin, don't you know it's hard to be at peace because we live under such a wicked government, such a corrupt government? I know it is. Okay? In the world you shall have tribulation. 
but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's, those are the words of Jesus, okay? So, you know, and I, I've been hearing about this a lot, how corrupt the government is. And now, what are they, what are they pushing now? If you've been turning on the TV, mandatory vaccinations. They've been rolled out, you know, I think it started this week, okay? Mandatory vaccination. What are we going to do? We're worried and concerned. Listen, no, we're called to be people of peace, okay? Now, yes, we do live in a, in a we've, under wicked leadership, okay? I, I know that. It's not new. That's not new. Not, <laughs> there's nothing new in the sun. You know, Jesus lived under wicked, wicked leadership as well, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. What? Pray for our wicked government? Pray for our wicked politicians? That's what the Lord's telling you to do. Okay? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You know what? I think there's just way too much whining and murmuring and complaining about our government. You know what God tells us to do? When, we're, when, when we don't have peace because of our wicked government, you know what we're meant to do? When we're meant to be praying for them. That's what we're meant to do. You know, every time I hear about how wicked our government is, I sure hope you've at least been praying about them or for them as much as you are complaining about them. In fact, I believe if you spend more time praying for them, you're not going to be complaining about them so much. All right? Because the only way we can live and lead a quiet and peaceful life is to pray for the kings and for all that are in authority. Like, I'm sick and tired of hearing about how wicked our government is. We know, we've known this. I've known this my whole life. Okay? It's not like 2020, now they're wicked. They've always been wicked. They've always been wicked. Okay, and I don't care if you're on the left or the right. They're all wicked. They're all corrupt. Okay? I mean, these people go into parliament or, or you know, go into power just to make money, to, to get them, make themselves rich. But you know, do, do you not think Paul knew this when he wrote 1 Timothy? Do you think God did not already know this? And God says, look, pray for them. Why? Pray that they would not make our lives difficult. Pray that they would allow us to live a quiet and peaceful life. So, you know, next time you start thinking, oh, I can't believe now they're doing mandatory vaccination. Oh, this is how wicked this government is. Look, before that comes out of your mouth, before you get carnally minded, how about you get spiritually minded first and go and pray for them? Okay? That's going to respect and honor what God has asked you to do. Okay? Because when you just pour out all the things that you're listening to that are carnally minded, okay, you know what that's going to breed? More trouble. You're just going to upset other people. You might upset other church members. They just want to live a peaceful life. They know what's going on. It's not like, oh, you're sheep, or you don't know what's going on. We all know what's going on. If you read your Bible, we all know what's going on. Okay? We all know what's going on. But you need to find the peace of God. Okay? We're called to be peacemakers. Peacemakers. We do that by praying for our authorities. I don't care how wicked they are. This is a commandment that is given to us by God. And it's not for the politicians' sake that we pray for them. It's for our sake that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. Maybe the reason why we do face a government that's trying to push their agenda, maybe we've not just not been praying for them. Okay? Maybe we've not been praying for this quiet and peaceful life. Maybe we've taken it all for granted and we can completely forgot about these passages and instead of praying as the people of God, we just started complaining about them. Murmuring and whining and complaining like the Israelites did when they came out of Egypt. Can you please turn to James chapter 3? James chapter 3. Verse 14. James chapter 3, verse number 14. So what's the solution, brethren? Prayers. Prayers. Take your worries, take your concerns to God. Okay? And then if you're concerned about what the government's doing, go and pray about them to God as well. Ask God, can you help them? Bring in the laws. You know, remove the restrictions so I can live a quiet and peaceful life. Lord, can you cause them to take away these restrictions that are restricting us to worship and serve you the way we would love to as a church? Those, that's what we need to be doing. Instead of just whining, whining and complaining gets nowhere. 
All it breeds is trouble. That's all it breeds. Trouble, confusion, and fears. Okay? We're called to be at peace. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Where did I ask you to, to turn? James chapter 3? James chapter 3, verse 14. Next thing I want to talk about is, even though we're striving for peace, it's not peace at all costs. Okay? It's not like peace is the most important thing that we strive for. There is actually something more important than peace. Okay? So, because I don't want anyone to think that after this sermon that, well, Pastor Kevin said, you know, it's peace at all costs. And so, you know what, I, I, I'm not going to uh, preach certain portions of the Bible because it could cause trouble and I just want to keep things peaceful. Right? If, if I, you know, I better not upset anybody, you know, because I'm driven, I've got, got to live for peace. Well, there's something more important than peace. James chapter 3, verse 14. It says here, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, that doesn't sound like someone of peace, right? Glory not and lie not against the truth. You know what this is saying to me? That people that have bitter envying and strife in their hearts, they actually like to glory about it. They like to glory about all their conflicts and, and, and the times they've, they've got into arguments and fights. Listen, that is not the heart, that is not the mind of a, of a peaceful person, Okay. Let's keep going. It says, And lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. You know what? People that just go on about their conflicts and strife, it's not from above. It's not from God. It's not the peace of God. Okay? It's earthly, sensual, devilish. It's being carnally minded. Again, okay? Verse number 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, look at this, this is important, is first pure, then peaceable. So is there something more important than peace? What's first? It says there, first pure. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Look at verse number 18. And the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Okay? Hey, what are we called to be? Jesus Christ says, blessed are the peacemakers. You know what we ought to be doing? We ought to be making peace. All right? How do we start? Again, we go to prayer. That's, that's our weapon. It's a powerful weapon. Prayer is powerful. It reaches the ears of God and He can step in and answer those prayers. Okay? We can change the COVID world if we just got on our knees and prayed to, the God, to God and took it seriously, asked Him to give us a, 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 you know, a quiet and peaceful life. Okay? We're called to be peacemakers. Now, what I want to notice in verse number 17, it's not peace at all costs. Something more important than peace is purity. First, pure. Okay? And so my, my point is this, brethren. You know, and I've, I've used this illustration a few times. You know, if you're out at work and your work colleagues are like, let's go to the pub. You know, let's drown our sorrows because we're not at peace, right? We, we've alcohol, whatever. And you might say, well, you know what? I, I, I want to get along with this person. I, I want to have peace with this person. So I'm going to head out there. No. First, pure. First, pure then peaceable, okay? So there are times that we're just not going to be able to have peace, okay? If you stand for purity, if you keep yourself pure. Listen, the words of God are pure words, pure words, okay? So as long as we stand on God's word, we're doing what God wants us to do, then you do everything to strive for peace, okay? You stick to purity, then you go for peace, Okay, you don't skip the purity. You don't skip on, on keeping yourself, uh, you know, def uh, undefiled just to seek after peace. You've got it mixed up. Okay, first purity, then peace. But peace is important. Okay, peace is important. But I just want you to notice it's not peace at all costs. I'm not just trying to find peace with everybody in this world. Okay, I try to, but first before I do that, I make sure that I live a pure, clean life. That you know gives God joy, okay, that follows what God wants us to, to live by. All right, can you please go to 1 Peter chapter 3? We'll end on this one. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. 
First Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. It says, Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that ye are therefore called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, listen, do you want to love your life? Do you want to see good days? Do you want 2021 to be a good days for you? You know, and, and just love life? You know what, even in the, in the midst of restrictions and border closures and, and mass mandates, you know, if you, you, do you still want to be someone that loves life? Or do you always be, want, want to be whining and complaining? Okay, well, what do we have to do? For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they should speak no guile. Look at this. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Let him seek peace and ensue it. You want 2021 to be one of the best years in your life? You know what you need to do? We need to seek peace. You need to ensue it. What does ensue it mean? Well, it kind of, like, kind of sounds like the word pursue. Okay? Same idea, right? Pursue is a little bit more negative. It's pursue is kind of like you're almost like a hostile person trying to pursue something. Like maybe, you know, the cops might be pursuing you or something like that. Uh, but to ensue is kind of the same idea. To ensue is to follow after okay or to to attain or to take hold of same kind of idea okay but not in the same negative context you know we're, we're to follow after peace okay we're to attain peace okay we ought to try to have that in our lives and you know sometimes there are just some people that just do not want the peace they actually like the conflicts they like the troubles okay but i don't <laughs> i don't i know they're necessary I know tribulation is going to work, you know, allow God to work in my life. But I want to, you know, go through tribulation and at the same time be at peace. Because that's how God wants us to operate. All right? And so, brethren, you know, this is fruit of the Spirit, part three, peace. And again, the only way you get that, brethren, is by being in the new man. You know, as we go through these fruits of the Spirit, I don't want you to say, well, yeah, I got this one, I got this one, I don't have this one. And that's just the way I am. I'm just not a peaceful person. You know, I'm just, no. You, 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 okay, yeah, you, you might admit that you're not that way. All you're admitting to me is that I don't walk after the Spirit. That's all you're admitting. All you're admitting is basically I'm kindly minded. Okay? So don't, don't, don't turn around and say to me, you know what, I'm just not that kind of person because you're just telling me, okay, well, you're kindly minded. And I don't want to think about you like that. I want to think about you as someone that is striving to allow the Holy Ghost to work these fruits into your life. Okay? And, you know, to put our hands up and admit that sometimes we are worried, sometimes we are troubled, sometimes we are afraid, okay, and we all go through that, okay, but when those times happen, what do we do? Be careful for nothing. We take our prayers with thanksgiving before God and say, God, help me, please take these worries away from me, please take these fears away from me, give me your peace that passeth all understanding. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord,